All right, we'll start this meeting tonight, the 11th of January, first meeting of 2016. We'll start with the uh, Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Uh, roll call, please. Okay, Mr. Worcester Bar absent. Ms. McGuire? Here. Mr. Gajewski? Here. Mr. Minkowski? Here. Ms. Grasco? Here. Mr. Weed? Here. Mr. Byer? Here. Thank you. Okay, uh, next is agenda additions. Is there anyone here, that, including uh, Bob and Dan? Anything? Hearing none? Okay, looks like the agenda is pretty much set for tonight. Uh, next item is public comment. Um, and uh, we have two public comments, but the first one we ask you to fill out a comment card and give that to Mr. Stalker. The second time, no card is necessary. Both times you have four minutes to speak. Do we have any cards? Uh, we have one. Uh, Doug Jager would like to talk about fishing for the future tournament. Okay. The weed guy. The weed guy. <laughs> I wasn't going to say it. But. <laughs> yeah, I'm here uh, just, uh, just to bring to the attention of the Township Board and those that are in attendance that uh, in February we are having the, uh, the third annual uh, fishing for the Future Tournament, which is a tournament which is supporting the Iasco Conservation District. Uh, we are uh, going February 13th. Hopefully the weather will be uh, much better than what we had the last year. It was really kind of bad. <laughs> uh, but we're, we're encouraging, we're trying to get a more of a family type of situation. And this is a Saturday before the Snowbox Derby, so we're tying that in. Uh, uh, I know that the uh, the Tourist Bureau has been uh, interested in trying to do a full weekend type of involvement where we'll do the tournament first, fishing tournament, then move on to something in the evening for adults, and then of course the Snowbox Derby on Sunday. So uh, what we're looking is just to make sure that that people in the community are aware of it and we're trying to get more involvement with our businesses. Uh, I've been out there and I don't know if you folks know about the conservation district, but what they do is they have a tree sale and they also support local businesses and also residents in uh, conservation issues involving invasive plants. Uh, they're also involved in the park right there uh, at, at, at the river. river. You know, uh, I know Andy uh, Beebe was our, our forester there and he's gone and uh, we wish we had him back, but we're hoping we'll get a new one and we'll get moving on that. And so it's, it's a positive thing for this, this township, at least during the winter months when things are a little bit on the slow side. So just wanted to bring that to your attention and uh, Hope that we can get more involvement, and as it grows, we go further. Any questions? What if you do? What What do you do if there, the ice isn't safe? Uh, we don't ice fish. <laughs> <laughs> Simple, Jim. Send everybody uh, home. Yeah. Or, uh... Uh, our ba Our backup would be, you know, if if it's not safe on that date, the thirteenth of February. We've actually got the next week beyond that. We try to keep it on that weekend because that's the free fishing weekend, so you don't have to have a license in order to be there. Uh, but if, let's say we just, there's no ice, it just doesn't happen. Okay. We'll move, we'll have to move on. I mean, that's just the way it is. All right. But other than that, we're hoping uh, we're in the freeze today. And uh, all it takes is a whole week of freeze, and we got six, eight inches of ice. Yep. So, any other questions? No. I got a question. 
if I enter and I don't catch a fish, do I get my money back? Uh, no. <laughs> Very simple. You lose. <laughs> it's kind of like the lottery tickets. Yeah. <laughs> buy a lottery ticket if you don't win. That's you right. Nobody catches any fish. Uh, then we're going to give it out to the kids that really deserve it. <laughs> okay, Thank folks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Any other cards? No, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Again, we have another public comment at the end of the meeting. Uh, four minutes to speak at that time also. All right, um, next um, we have a presentation uh, from Mr. Paul Rakowski uh, dealing with uh, his ideas to form an archery league at the community center. Paul? Okay. Paul's on the agenda, I might say, so the four-minute rule does not apply to him. <laughs> he gets favorite. You guys got a while. Go for it, Paul. Yeah, I'm Paul Rukowski, and uh, you know I've seen you guys put the, my proposal in your packet, so I assume you guys reviewed it. Uh, I'm not going to bore you with going over all the details of it, but uh, basically it's an archery league I'm trying to start up in town. Uh, hopefully I have 20 four members shooting and for a 10 week season I want to use the community center back gym in the community center and I was told I need to present a proposal in order to rent it for that purpose so that's what I did was put together a proposal and I'm here to answer any questions or uh, you know find out if there's any concerns that somebody may have for, for using that facility for that purpose. Board members? Paul, is this a, um, a group that you've already had together previously, or is this something newly formed? No, forming a new uh, group, just like forming a new bowling league. We're fo forming an archery league. I'm in the process of uh, trying to get enough members to make the, the league viable. Do you have to, is it an age specific group, or do can kids be in it? Or? We haven't set an uh, age uh, limit. I don't anticipate we'll have uh, youngsters uh, wanting to do it. I guess it would depend. We don't want to, it's not going to be uh, something for beginners. It's going to be more for advanced uh, shooters. So um, if there's, you know, youngsters that are, you know, 15, 16 years old that are uh, fully capable of handling uh, the type of weapons we're going to use, then we'll probably entertain uh, having them in the league. So this is more like a competition? Yes. Okay. So it's not teaching people to use the archery equipment. It's, it's, it's Correct. one guy competing. It's, it's going to be an uh, eight lane set up uh, in your packages. There was a little sketch I put in there that showed using a portion of the gym where we're going to have eight lanes that we would have each team set up on the lane just like bowling and uh, your shooters would shoot down the lane at the targets. Uh, one at a time, uh, three man teams, and each person would shoot three arrows. And when everybody shot, then you put your weapons down, go to your arrows, come back. Well, you score your arrows, and then come back and move over to the next target. How long is each one of these meetings going to last? We uh, we want to rent the gym for two hours. Two hours. We think we could get it uh, the eight target shot within the two hour time frame. What kind of backstop are you going to have? Well, uh, the bales, which will be the targets, are going to be uh, made of Excelsior bales, which are uh, compressed, they're like straw bales, but they're actually wood fiber that are extremely compressed hard, so you can't put anything through them. And uh, they're commercially available uh, and purchased for that purpose. And then in the background, they also make uh, these curtains that are for this exact purpose to uh, act as backstops uh, in an archery, uh, in an archery lane. And use broadheads, field tips, or blunts? Just target tips. And we're 
like I said, we want to do it for 10 weeks. I want to get it kicked off uh, by the end of this month. It uh, takes almost two weeks to get all the equipment uh, for it, and we're talking uh, between two and $3,000 worth of equipment that uh, needs to be purchased, and that's waiting for getting approval to get in the facility to use it. So I need to have an answer as soon as possible so that we can get started. This $8, is that $8 for the whole season or $8? $8, $8 per night? man per night. Okay. And you're going to generate enough money for, I mean, this is your business, not our concern, right. but you're no, going to generate No, can't enough? do it in one year. It'll take a, a few years to just pay back the equipment itself, pay the rental fees. Um, so it's a, it's a risk I'm taking my, personally, uh, paying for the equipment. But I think once we get it going, I think it's something that we could have around for uh, several years. Actually, I, had a, I just had a question on storage. Are you going to be taking the bales with all the equipment with you, or are you looking to store it? My intent is to store them at the facility, leave them on. Uh, uh, we're going to build some platforms with rollers on the bottom, and we would just push them off to the side out of the way of the basketball court. Or if need be, I don't know, you guys have hockey players in there, I don't know if that would be in their way of uh, uh, if they were off in the corner or not. But uh, if so, we could, I guess, push them into that other, um, other room that you have adjacent that breezeway. Paul, is this something that um, you like go to other communities and do and like you would invite other people to come here to compete or anything? That's not the intent of this. This is for just local people, people. to do it. I, I, I used to be part of a similar type of um, league up in Assanique. There's an uh, archery facility up there and uh, I used to participate in that league. It was almost this identical structure. We may have had 10 lanes there and maybe 10 teams that participated. But, um, you know, it was just people from the local area, form teams. Like, like I said, it's real close to, like, former bowling leagues. And I've got a lot of guys that are interested, but I just need to get it all together. And for This is the most important part, is to uh, have a facility to go into in the winter that's heated. And uh, I understand it's $35 an hour for the facility, so we're talking about, you know, two hours, seventy dollars a night would be paying for uh, 10 weeks. And, and you set that figure, $35 an hour. No, that's our figure. That's Did our not? figure. Okay, that's ours? Yes. All right. Okay. Uh, you have a name for your organization. Uh, I'll go to Bow Hunters Archery League. Uh, it, that would indicate to me that you're fairly well along as far as organizing. And how, how many people do you have right now? That I've got a, about three quarters of the uh, teams formed. I'm just needing like two more teams to, to have a full league. No, I don't have any, uh, uh, there's no formal <coughs> charter or anything like you'd have for another group. It, this is just uh, something we're just starting on. Yeah. Once we get it started, it, you know, that's what we're, we're going to call it. Um, but like I said, until we can have a facility to use, we're not going to have have a league. Yeah. So that's why I'm here. Well, um, you have had some back and forth communication with Bob, mm -hmm. and somewhere in there, he talked in terms. He has got about a half a dozen. Uh, items here that, that you have a formal organization uh, that we can identify and it sounds like you're getting close to that if not there already. Uh, he talked about uh, insurance, he talked about uh, that the gym will be limited solely to this activity, you're not going to have walkers going around or anything like that, you have to work with Al Epsidus on the scheduling and stuff. Oh yeah, I yeah. presume that the, when I rent the, the facility it's exclusive use Right. For what the people that run it, isn't that correct? Okay. I assume so, yeah. you've got it where they're not going to be able to get in there. Yeah, there's two, there's really only one public entrance to get in there, and that one is going to be easily controlled access. 
at the backs of the shooters and then the other two doors we can certainly secure so I don't I don't foresee any uh, safety issues relative to people unexpectedly coming into the uh, shooting area what about an injury to one of the shooters injury to a shooter I guess that's possible yeah just like with playing racquetball or basketball or anything else they do in there that, that, that's possible Although, if you looked at, I don't know if you guys got a chance to look at that um, brochure that was attached in the back, but archery is out of the, you know, a list of 35 sports or whatever it was, archery was probably the lowest risk for injury per thousand uh, participants. So your uh, probability of injury is uh, pretty minuscule. Fourth from the bottom, I have your list here. I think badminton was a little under it, maybe. Table tennis, badminton, and bowling are yeah. <laughs> safer. I don't mean to be a curmudgeon here or anything like that, because I think this sounds like a good uh, idea, and we always need more activities there. But the list of 35 or whatever number here, uh, I would imagine these ratings of safety or, or threat of injury is based on if these things are played or performed in their natural environment like football and soccer and horseback riding they're not going to be inside you know and so they've got them rated in degree of danger based on their natural uh, venue ice skating golf uh fishing from the weed guy uh, <laughs> uh and and you know, you're on here. Archery is, as, as I said, fourth from the bottom, but I, I don't think indoor archery is the natural venue of archery. It's outside with hay bales and trees and fields in the background. That's what makes it so safe. I would, I would argue the opposite. I would say archery in the wintertime in many locales is, uh, mm -hmm. takes place indoors, and there's several archery ranges throughout the state where you do have archery indoors mm -hmm. and um, if you're talking about rel relative risk uh, I mean yeah soccer or football is played outdoors and relative risk of it I mean you're talking about liability aren't you getting yeah. that isn't that what you're getting at yeah I, I mean I'm, I'm trying to this chart mm -hmm. which is interesting but right. But again, I'm saying that all these activities that they have listed here are probably rated based on their natural venue and where they are played. And archery, its natural venue is not inside of a gymnasium. So I think it gets a real safe rating because it's out in the open and with woods in the background. Um, I don't, I don't, I'm not saying it's impossible to do inside, and I agree, in the wintertime, you gotta do it there. But, but uh, as far as it being like really safe and stuff, I'm not sure of that in, inside. Uh, so thus our emphasis on insurance for, I mean, it's our job to kind of protect the public as, public's money as far as you know, lawsuits and that type of thing. So uh, uh, I, I don't know. I would make the motion that we go ahead with this if you can come up with uh, insurance for that. Have you priced insurance for this? I haven't priced it, but I'm aware of the pricing, and that's a deal breaker. I mean, insurance is not gonna be viable to uh, make this a, an affordable activity. Uh, and quite frankly, I disagree with you relative to your presumption that archery is outdoors. I think archery, target archery, is practiced indoors as well as outdoors. Mm -hmm. um, it, uh, so I, I, I don't think those statistics are skewed um, towards outdoors. I think they're relatively indoors. So I, I, I am adamant about the fact that archery is, is safe. I've, I've uh, participated in it all my life. I, I'm not aware of anybody ever injured uh, in the pro uh, process of shooting a bow. Uh, maybe during hunting when you're outside and in the, in the, you sh up in a tree and you fall out or you shoot somebody else. But when you're pr practicing or um, 
you're target archery shooting and you're following the rules of uh, proper etiquette uh, where you're not going to even load your weapon, let alone aim your weapon and fire your weapon when somebody is downrange of you, I think your chances of injury from an arrow are almost impossible. I mean, it's almost impossible. The only injury I would foresee would be if a person were to injure themselves because they pull a muscle from pulling their bow. I've never heard of anybody get shot with, a, with an arrow uh, at an archery range uh, if persons are following the appropriate rules, which is what we intend to do. That will be mandatory. <coughs> Paul, do you um, foresee your group like organizing and maybe growing to a position where you might have to, you might be able to do the insurance at some point, but maybe not right at the beginning? I don't think so. Um, sorry about that. I don't anticipate that because, um, like I said, the price of paying back the equipment it alone is going to be uh, several years. And I don't think if we get to be priced up much higher than the price that we're uh, proposing to charge people, that we're going to uh, attract enough people to participate. So I think $8 is reasonable. It's cheaper than bowling. But uh, still, you know, guys are uh, having to pay that every week. And uh, so I, you know, if we were to add on insurance, I'm I'm assuming we're going to take, we would take on probably a couple thousand dollars a year um, additional costs just like they do for a softball in town. Like they have to pay one fee for the whole year, you know, and that's a, that's a pretty... Uh, Is that how much it costs for softball? Fee. I assume, I don't know for certain, but I assume it's, uh, I think the Chris Mulville was telling me it averages out to about $25 a man, and if you, and you you know, in softball, you probably got several hundred guys who are uh, three up playing. Close. So, yeah, three up close. for sports activity. Yeah, I so know liability insurance for like my business or for the construction business and such is anywhere. In my case, four million dollars of liability insurance is five hundred dollars a year. Um, and even though my products won't harm anybody, I'm still required to have that insurance by people who I'm licensed. It's just, just a protection for it. And since the, uh, since we require it of pretty much all organized activities that happen on our grounds, um, and everybody's required to have a million dollars worth of liability insurance. That, uh, Is that I true? I think it's a, I think it's a, a uh, I think it's a tough risk on the township if something does happen. Now I agree, our trees probably pretty safe sport and all that, but that doesn't mean nothing's going to happen. You know, as simple as something like many years ago in Ensemble Township when somebody tripped on the sidewalk and, or on a boardwalk and bankrupted them. You know, it's just, it's just too much of a, of a risk to the general taxpayer to have to pay that. Is your statement true that you require everybody who participates in sports in that gymnasium has to have liability insurance? Is that a true statement? Or organizations. I think the distinction is the, the typically the, the uh, activities that the township sponsors, we don't require insurance, but uh, Little League, AYSO, those types of things we do. So depends how maybe you would view this activity. Is this an independent entity uh, or is it, is it a township sanctioned activity? And that's part of the rationale for the question as to whether this is a separate organization. Right, and with a private organization. Or you know, if it's rented by like the wood carvers, when the wood carvers association they provide insurance. Anybody that does it's right. separate. But, but that's kind when of you're a, inviting the public in that doesn't sign waivers mm -hmm. to um, a wave liability. Uh, do you charge? Uh, do you require the guys that play hockey in there to have insurance? We don't, to the best okay. of my knowledge. What about the basketball players that play in there? Do they have to have liability insurance? They don't, but frankly, the part of the reason we're having this discussion this evening from staff standpoint is there's a unique risk here. And, you know, the, the, obviously opinions differ just based on the discussion so far. And I think the underlying premise from Mr. Rapsita's perspective and myself is that if something were to happen, it could be a significant liability. So 
I suspect, frankly, the statistics that we're talking about relate to the likelihood of an injury, not the severity of one. And there, that, that's a big difference in terms of exposure to the community. Now, our insurance covers normal activity that happens within the community center, within that sports, indoor sports activity. Our insurance covers that. Right, like the weightlifting We, we actually basketball. would be covered for this if we were to approve it. The insurance agent suggested that. Oh, I thought he said in here that we wouldn't be covered. I think we will be covered. He said we should have uh, independent insurance provided if possible. If not, then a hold harmless. But if all else fails, we would have coverage. But it would be directly borne by the township, I believe. I guess I would argue that um, if there's other entities that are allowed to participate in activities in our facility, that our township people own, and they're not required to have insurance, then I would think you're uh, discriminating requiring it of us, uh, an archery league, to have insurance when you don't require it of everybody. Well, um, Paul Olson, he yeah. did say, I mean, he did say about the hold harmless agreements. But the, I guess is the concern of some of the other board members that that isn't enough? I think it would be enough. I mean. I mean, isn't that, you know, you do it that at other places? Yeah. And you're not talking about a beginner's thing or where they're teaching people. These are people that know how to shoot. Yes, is there a risk? Well, there's a risk of somebody falling and breaking their leg playing basketball. I think there's more of a risk in the basketball there's league. There's no doubt yeah. about it. I've played all those sports, hockey, basketball, racquetball, and shot archery, and there's no question on my mind the risk of injury is <laughs> infinitesimally small in archery compared to uh, those other sports. So you know, I think the township's at risk uh, right now, uh, I mean, more so than uh, adding this activity. I think my only concern um, is I wasn't aware that we were going to keep the equipment on the property. Um, so, you know, number one, I don't know if it should stay in the gym because there's going to be open to the public. Number two is whatever you're going to keep it in going to fit through the doorways. And number three, you know, is there going to be a fee to store it there? Because, you know, we don't do that for everybody else to keep their stuff there. I don't, not that I'm aware of anyways, for any other activities that... Story the hockey, the yeah. hockey players keep their nets there. They do. Okay, and that's their nets that belong to them. Yeah. That type of thing. They're okay. Push back out of the way. And they're only 18 inches wide. We can fit them through doors if need be. Right. To get out of the way, put them in the uh, in that breezeway in the back. Then. And as long as they don't interfere with anything else in the back. Yeah, my only concern about it, like I said, was that and you know if it was a beginner league if you were teaching other people but clearly it's a competition thing of people that are you know what they're doing is there going to be any dividers between the lanes or are they just open lanes open lanes don't get the wrong target yeah don't. you know this you've given us a list of um, activities and, and ask us if we demand insurance of them, this, this can kind of work both ways because like for instance later on our agenda we have the American Cancer Society that's uh, going to have an activity involving people walking dogs on Fertile Field. They have insurance. The soccer kids, there's another sport. Uh, mm -hmm. Little League provides insurance. Um, Chamber of Commerce activities uh, down at the beach, perhaps uh, Paul Bunyan Festival. Those people all pay insurance, so we can trade lists here. Sure, uh, you know. So. But on the other, uh, but I already explained to you the reason for having general public people in a activity. You're covered, trying to cover everybody, and you don't have any waivers against their liability uh, liability against you. So when so I can see when the wood carvers come in there, you, you could have a drunk guy come in there, you got no control, he's gonna fall and, mm -hmm. and uh, break his leg. I mean, that's why you get required insurance, but when you have a controlled facility where your participants are registered and you have them sign waivers, then I say that that's a different situation. You're holding 
the township harmless from liability? Um, I mean, if, give me a hypothetical of injury that you all are concerned about, because I, I can't think of a hypothetical situation where there's a chance for it's, injury. It's not a thing of that a specific injury is gonna happen. Uh -huh. It's that anything could happen because of the private organization using that public space. And if that anything happened, then is it right for the general taxpayer to have to pay for that? Right. And, and like I said, other activities are in the same boat in that facility. If you required insurance of everybody that walked in that building, I'm a member, I pay my dues, I sign a waiver to lift weights or play racquetball in that facility. I'm waiving the township of liability if I get injured in there when I'm working out. So I don't see what the difference is. With the difference this. is it's a private organization that's been occupying that public space. I'm a private entity. When, right. I'm, when I'm going in to use that facility, as a as a racquetball player but that's, that's what the township is set up to handle is when the individual goes in there to do that they're not set up to handle when the private organization goes in there to do that what okay explain to me then what additional risk that uh, calls upon the township to have because it's a group of people that are organized versus a whole mass of people going in at the same time what additional risk is that place on the township when you got 28 people in the uh, basketball court playing basketball, is that less of a risk than if you got 28 guys in the back shooting archery? I don't see it. I don't see it. Just explain that to me. Well, I'd like to know about the policy, what it states on regarding that. Because if we do have some organizations using it that aren't paying the insurance, then I have some concern with that unless there's some kind of specific circumstance that they're away from having that. I don't know that there's a defined policy, but I think the, the, the general principle to date, and Al, if I'm off the mark here, is that if, if the activity's been endorsed by the township and it's an activity that we quote sponsor, we know people are playing hockey, we know people are playing basketball, that's a risk that uh, we have assumed, and it's sort of a standard thing in a municipal community center facility like we have. I think the reason we're here this evening is Mr. Rakowski's request arguably is somewhat unique, and obviously there's a difference of opinion. Does it constitute a higher level of risk, and as such, is that a reasonable thing for us to assume as, as township government the same way we've assumed these others? And I don't know if it makes a difference, Aaron, when, when he's talking about the different leagues, they're pickup leagues. They're um, basketball, it's men's night of basketball, and the hockey, it's whoever shows up to play is playing. It's not necessarily an organized <coughs> league. Um, right, say, pickleball, or volleyball, or, like or whatever else. Right, it's whoever shows up play, and plays. They don't sign a so, waiver, though, to do that. Um, they sign in, uh, they have to do a $5, if they're not, I mean, sorry, Al. Um, I mean, if they're a member, they already signed a waiver when they signed the slip. If they're a non-member and they're just doing a walk-in, they, they fill out the same card and they have a, you know, they're signing the, the same waiver, basically. So, so there wouldn't be any difference. I, I don't know if, if, if this is all the same. This is all right. kind of going around circles now. When, you, when, you, when you're playing basketball or when you're playing pickleball or racquetball or whatever, those are things that the communities are designed to do. That's what people do in there. I don't know if the damage that you could cause playing basketball or racquetball or pickleball or hockey is, can be equated to shooting an arrow indoors. I mean, they're two different things. I think that's the one thing that, the only thing that I think I was concerned about was not so much that I don't have faith that the league would be safe because I believe that he, he would keep it safe. You know, we would have a range type, range master type person that would, you know, follow the rules. You couldn't cross the waiting line to shoot. You couldn't shoot until you were told. You couldn't retrieve the arrow until you were told. Um, I think the safety factors, he's pretty much on the mark. It's, it's a fairly safe sport. I've talked with other uh, facilities and they've had uh, good luck with their safety as well. Uh, however, there are places set up for that. That's an archery center, mm -hmm. not a community center. This is a community center where we've never had this before. This is something new. 
I've never had anybody shoot an arrow or BB guns or 22s or anything that's, you know, they're playing basketball, racquetball, things that this community center was designed to, to do. What I would say in response to that is go to an archery facility and see what it looks like. It's just like it looks the like a gymnasium. Right. Uh, with I, I, agree, I, I agree that I think, and I haven't had a chance to go right. see them, but I think that this explained to me the same way. Yeah. The same way. And the other thing I would argue against is speculation that anything could happen, and you never know what could happen. I have prevented, I have presented documentation which rel relates relative risk of this sport to a number of other sports, including some that take place in that facility. And this sport is hundredths uh, of a percentage of risk of injury that, as opposed to uh, those other sports that already take place. And I'm not arguing to end basketball or end hockey or any of that stuff. I'm just saying that if you're allowing that stuff and you're okay with the risk associated with that, then I don't see what the uh, fear is of risk from this. So Al, your main concern would be damage to the building, not the risk of injuries. Well, if, I think if he follows the way he said it was going to, and I, I, I'm pretty confident he would do what he says he's going to do as safety-wise, and, and I, I've talked with him about this. It's, you know, if you limit the entrance and exit of people, the general public that come in, I, I don't think they'll have too many problems. I, I was just, my biggest concern was um, backdrop, errant arrows, it's a rubber floor. Um, he, he pretty much quelled my my worries about going into the floor. It, it seemed like it was pretty tough to get an arrow on the floor. Could it happen? Anything could happen. Uh, could you miss the target? Anybody could miss it. Is it going to happen? The likelihood is probably, you know, probably not very reasonable to think that it would. But you know, it, it could. But I, I think, and he even talked with the, the um, gentleman at the Mirror Center, which is in Lansing. He said the more um, experienced league hunters, like they are planning on, on having there, are, are better shots than the new kids, the, the younger kids, the, what you're trying to teach. He says those kids are arrows all over the place. He said, but the league guys, they're there for a reason, and they're, they're fairly good shots. Well, I think this is new to us, and I think that's what's throwing us, is, you know, the uncertainty of it. I, I like the idea of it. I like bringing something else into the community center. Mm -hmm. um, but there's that little, little, little factor that what if something happens kind of thing. But I guess when you do anything, you have to start taking risks. Um, yeah. Jim, you made a motion, didn't you? No, there's no motion that I oh. know of yet. So, uh, Jill? Are we allowed to ask questions? You can ask a question. <laughs> <laughs> spectators. Are there going to be any spectators? We could allow spectators, but the spectators would be behind the line, behind the shooting line, just like shooters. And, okay. No. <laughs> also, also <laughs> spectators you know, like come in various said, sizes. Yes. When, when you join the uh, community center, you sign a release for liability. Mm -hmm. Would your members also sign? Oh yeah, would be liars? would be amenable to signing waivers. In fact, we would want to. Uh, we don't want anybody to be concerned with our activities. We have a level of confidence in our abilities to be able to uh, follow the rules and hit the target. So I'm I'm not uh, worried about signing the waivers. But they want us to join as a member for that tenure period. The, you know, could they do that with that? Sure. Or of course, if they, you know, there's probably the people that are members already, but the right. thing is, is we, in order to rent that facility, uh, we have to pay a fee, a unique fee, even if we're members. So I'm a member, I already paid my $100, but it doesn't give me a break, does it, on the $70, no. or does it? So all our fees, you know, $8 a night are going to go to paying for towards that $70. Well, we have to move along. Um, so I have two things to say. Number one is you sound to me like you're in, um, you use the language, that's a deal breaker, rather emphatic. Do I get the impression you're not even willing to check the cost of the insurance? Um, I could check the cost of insurance, but I already know it. When I made up the uh, whole 
uh, game plan of creating the league, and I figured out the costs mm -hmm. of what it was going to be to buy the equipment, to rent the facility, um, and and what people are willing to spend. I I was I was leery of even you know eight dollars a night because guys may be shy to, shying away from that. But uh, I mean, if you're going to throw another couple thousand or even five hundred dollars for that matter on top of that, five hundred would be a deal breaker. Well, I think so. I think so because you're talking about you know adding another uh, couple oh. dollars a, a piece to guys, and and I, I guess I'll be willing to look into it, but. Um, I am, uh, as, a mem as a member of this community and as a member of uh, this township that is the owner of that facility, just like everybody else is, I think it's only fair that you treat us the same way you treat everybody else. And since I've already demonstrated that there's several other activities in there, including members that come in there and sign waivers and lift weights, uh, and you don't require them to have insurance, then I think it's unfair of you requiring us to have insurance. Okay. Well, um, but I will check into it. Okay, and, and give, if you don't, that's a deal breaker for me. Well, so let's see. Um, let's have a vote. Yeah, that's the, what I'm. The second thing I'm going to say. Uh, let's put this under other, and we will deal with it uh, later uh, tonight. Can I ask him one more question? Sure. Before we move on. Archery is defined as a big definition behind archery. What kind of bows are you going to use? Hunting bows. They'll be um, high. The hunting bows, define high end, that. High end hunting bows that can shoot an arrow anywhere from 150 to 320 feet per second. You didn't answer my question. The compounds, the recurves, the long bows. All the above. Hunting no bows. Crossbows. No crossbows. Good, because that would have been a deal breaker for me. I don't consider that urgent. Matter of opinion. Okay, uh, with the board's permission, we'll make this number five under other. And, uh, number six, six. Really? Yep. Oh, we have the um, land division. Yes. That's five. Okay, six. Yep. You're right. How come you don't have that on your sheet? I have it. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Thank you, Paul. Thank you. Does that mean you're going to have a vote on that tonight? That yeah, does mean under others. Yeah, under other. uh, towards the end of the meeting. Towards the end. Okay. Or at the end. Depends how fast everybody has to talk. I'm sorry, it was so long. <laughs> no, really? No, we had lots of questions. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um, well the next thing we have is the consent agenda. Anybody have a problem with the, mean, the minutes, not the minutes, uh, for the December 14th meeting? Anybody? Errors? Questions? Nope. Okay, uh, financial report, uh, because it's been so long since we've had a meeting, the uh, number is uh, unusually high, 789790 dollars and 71 cents. Um, anybody have any questions regarding uh, a little over three quarters of a million dollars in payments here? Hearing none, uh, <clears throat> the last part of the consent agenda, Bob has four items, uh, informational items, consent items. Uh, one dealing with the Oscoda Community Center Archery League and uh, Senior Citizen Millage and Computer Equipment Purchase, HOSRA Matters. Uh, any questions at all on any of these? If not, I need a uh, motion to accept the consent, the three-part uh, consent agenda. So support. Okay, moved by Ms. Carrasco with support from Ms. McGuire that we do accept the uh, uh, minutes, the financial report, and Bob's four uh, informational items. Roll call, please. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Pankowski? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Uh, all right, we move on to action items and superintendent's report, and I believe he has about five or six. 
uh, six to be exact. And the first one is the MLGMA conference uh, that you wish to attend. Yes, thank you. Uh, that would be the Michigan Local Government Management Association having their Winter Institute uh, in early February this year in Port Huron. Normally I attend one of those two institutes. There's also a summer one uh, more recently. Uh, it's been the winter. The estimated cost, including lodging, is supposed to be estimated to be five to six hundred dollars. And my employment agreement requires the board's approval to attend the conferences. So I am seeking same. Okay. This is the organization that has a winter and a summer. Yeah. Okay. Do you usually attend one or both of them? The rare Some occasions I've gone both almost, you know, probably 90% of the time, one okay. per year. I make a motion we approve the attendance to the Winter Institute. Uh, support. Roll call, please. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Pankowski? Yes. Bye. Yes. Motion carried. Number two item, um, wastewater improvement project uh, and some uh, payment and change order. Yes, uh, this would be progress payment number two as submitted by RCL Construction and also change order number one. Uh, in the case of the progress payment, the sum is $503,676.04. Uh, the payment's been certified by the engineer and if it's approved by the board tonight, uh, we will submit for reimbursement uh, for the portion of it uh, that's eligible through the SRF. And that basically is the way we draw down the, the debt funding there. Um, uh, in terms of the change order, there was a crack discovered along the top of the small uh, lagoon cell uh, back in late November, early December. I was made aware of it. It was repaired. It was uh, necessary to do it in a timely fashion because the riprap was being installed. Uh, the total cost was $1,385. And uh, now um, it's necessary to acknowledge approval. I, I guess given the amount and the situation, I felt comfortable moving ahead with that. Okay. Questions? Discussion at all? Uh, is, is it unusual for us to have just one change order this far along, or is this about normal? Um, I'm reticent to comment because <laughs> it probably is unusual. We've probably been fortunate so far. Okay. You Although, wanna... given the type of work that they've been doing, uh, it's not entirely yeah. surprising. Okay. Just a statement, Chris. This is the bill where is also in the finance report too. Yes. That's what's making our yes. bill was finance yes, so high. Just that. so the board knows, oh. it's yeah. not an additional five hundred thousand yeah, no. dollars. Okay. It's already included in the finance yeah, I report. Yeah, comment that the, the payment of bills was. You're right. Three quarters. I didn't want you to yeah. think, yeah, I have holy to cow. This okay. <laughs> okay. And, and if the board does not approve it, we have we'll pull it aside, out. so we pull it. So. Okay. I'll move we go ahead with progress payment number two to RCL. Support. Motion by uh, Mr. Vinkowski with support from Mr. Weed. We do go ahead with this. Roll call. Mr. Vinkowski? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Yes, Mr. Byer? Yes, motion carried. Third item, uh, <clears throat> a employment recommendation for our DPW. Yes, uh, as we've talked uh, a couple times in recent meetings, well, one of our current maintenance two building and grounds uh, department employees is going to be retiring uh, in approximately June of 2016. Originally, the discussion was resignation with that employee leaving at the end of the year. We had begun a recruitment process, um, and uh, we now have the opportunity to consider uh, employment of an individual uh, to ease that transition so that there's overlap, as we had discussed, between the incoming and outgoing employees. I've provided the employment application of Mr. Keith Furrow. I've discussed a scenario with Mr. Furrow whereby he would begin employment at a starting wage of $14.46 per hour. That's year two on our wage scale. 
and then moved to 1487 per hour, which is year three, uh, upon successful completion of six-month orientation. Uh, the accommodation in terms of the wage is in, in recognition of his relevant experience to perform the duties of the job. If the board approves his employment, he's prepared to begin on a full-time basis on uh, January 18th. I would anticipate monitoring the, tra uh, the training uh, in orientation process and at some point talking to our longer term employee about uh, transitioning to part time. Uh, we've actually discussed that in concept already, uh, but obviously depending on how things go, um, uh, there is some subjectivity required there. Uh, as I note in the recommendation there, this uh, process will require a budget uh, adjustment uh, as we'll have two full-time people on for a period. And having said all that, I'm seeking authorization to employ uh, Mr. Keith Burrow as a full-time building and grounds maintenance to employee. Okay. And he will be working in conjunction with Mr. Kevin Smith? Correct. I'll make a motion we authorize employment for Mr. Furrow starting at the pay rate as stated. Support. Okay. Motion by Ms. McGuire with support from Mr. Weiss. Any further discussion? Anybody? Yeah. In the, uh, the both of them are going to be employed full time. Then you're going to talk to Kevin about going part time? At some point. What, what's the time period? Well, yet to be determined. Uh, I think it depends on. Um, the amount of effort that's required to train, the amount of issues we have in the interim, so I, I don't have a specific time frame for it. Okay, my point is, don't cut him short. <laughs> we need all the information you can get. That's a good point. Okay. Um, roll call, please. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Benkowski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Dyaski? Yes. Mr. Byer? <coughs> yes. Okay, motion carried. And next item, number four out of six, is another employment recommendation, this time uh, with the police department. Yes. Uh, attached a recommendation from the chief of police uh, uh, communication setting forth a recommendation that the township employ Mr. Travis Simmons as a police officer. Uh, to fill an ex existing vacancy. Uh, Mark has provided copies of his employment application for your information and review, and it's my suggestion that uh, that recommendation from the Chief of Police be accepted and that Mr. Travis Simmons be employed as an Osco Township Police Officer. And with the Police Chief's um, recommendation, I'm assuming that all the various uh, testing has taken place. That has been Successful. completed. Yes. Okay. I make a motion to employ Mr. Travis Simmons as an Oscoda Township Police Officer. Support. All right. Roll call, please. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Ms. Grasco? Yes. Mr. Pankowski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Do we know his start date? Anybody? We don't at this point. Uh, he is currently employed and, and uh, was unsure how much notice. No more than probably two weeks could be okay. sooner. Okay, number five is uh, correction in wage and salary schedules. Yes, uh, at the last meeting in December, uh, there were revised wage and salary schedules presented uh, in conjunction with the budget. It's subsequently been discovered that there were a few errors uh, in particular, the seasonal wage schedule um, has a progression on a year-to-year -year basis where the increases were not uh, incorporated properly, and then there were a couple of steps overlooked for uh, part-time employees in the regular classification and compensation plan. So the correct ones are dated January 11th. I provided copies of the December 9th for purposes of comparison. My suggestion is that the revised schedules be adopted as presented. Okay. Do we have a motion on this or any discussion? Any questions? I'll move. Okay. We have support? Support. 
Okay, motion by Ms. McGuire with support from Ms. Carrasco that we do go ahead with uh, revised wage and salary schedules as presented. Anything further? Roll call, please. Mr. Reed? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Minkowski? Yes. Ms. Carrasco? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay, final item. Motion carried here. Final item. Uh, we've talked about this once or twice earlier. Uh, the uh, study uh, of the police department uh, or, uh, a review of this that uh, we haven't had one of these since the 1990s 97 Seven, I believe yeah. yes. okay. six okay what's the latest here well uh, last time we talked about this I uh, affirmed that we have received three proposals and that an evaluation of them was going to be undertaken <coughs> subsequently and I have in fact done that um, we are confronted with somewhat of an apples and oranges situation from the standpoint of both economics and experience of the uh, proponents the two higher cost proposals come from firms with more extensive experience and it was suggested to me by uh, an independent third party that the higher cost proposals are probably no uh, more in the realm of the norm for, from a pricing standpoint. However, after reviewing the proposals, uh, I chose to focus on the more cost competitive from Vitrano for purposes of doing uh, detailed due diligence. The proposal does appear responsive and well attuned to our solicitation. In undertaking due diligence, I spoke directly with both the proposed consultants involved in the project and the majority of references from each. Uh, it should be noted that this is the first independent consulting effort for, for uh, both gentlemen. In the case of the lead consultant, James Petrano, uh, the contact at Southeast Michigan Council of Governments indicated that they've used his services several times in a consulting capacity with very positive results including law enforcement analysis, SIMCOG services, a number of governmental units in Southeast Michigan. They have internal resources to do consulting and they rely on outside consultants when the workload or the services required uh, dictate that extra level of assistance or expertise. And that's the um, scenario in which Mr. Vitrano uh, came to work for them. Uh, feedback relative to the professional capacity of both consultants and capability was consistently very good in talking to the references. However, uh, most of the references uh, provided were focused, as you might imagine, more on employment versus consulting roles. It was acknowledged in discussing the proposal with Mr. Vitrano that the pricing was deliberately aggressive given the fact that this is a new firm. Uh, it was also suggested it's a reflection of lower overhead. They would envision two trips to Oscoda, uh, one to gather intelligence, another to present results. There would obviously be communication in the interim. Their projected timeline for completion would be six to eight weeks. Uh, there's no doubt that in the final analysis, there's an element of risk in considering engaging the services of a newly emerging consulting firm. Uh, my estimation, though, is that the combination of the very positive feedback from due diligence and attractive pricing are, argues for strongly considering acceptance of the proposal. And in fact, one might argue that uh, they may be eager to demonstrate competence by going the extra mile. Uh, but again, there's a value judgment here and some risk. Do you have any um, questions or comments? Okay. Will yep. they be coming to the township um, being there to, to gather their information or is this all going to be done electronically or how, do, how is this all done? They're going to make one trip up here to talk to people, interview people, gather information and the rest of it will be done electronically or, or over distance and then they would make one more trip back. Whether they would come at the same time or separate trips, I don't know. you think that his fees are fairly low because he's trying to get into the into this uh, area of evaluating police departments and well, consulting in general I asked yeah. that question yes yeah. okay the 
public might be interested in knowing that the, uh, the bid prices were 32,500, 29,000, and 9,760, the one we're going with. So, but the references, the references that uh, you know Bob has alluded to, uh, are are good ones. They're people that we know. All right, the uh, attorney for Husra has crossed paths with this gentleman. The references are both from Michigan and Pennsylvania. So, uh, pretty strong. I make a motion to hire Petrino Consulting to execute the police department study. Support. Anything further? I'm no just going to say sometimes it. you get what you pay for, so yeah. um, only going to say that if Bob's comfortable with it, that's up to him. Is it getting warm in here? The bus just backed up. No, we have been burned before on taking low bids. Oh, yes, we have. So, uh, should, should I have yes, highlighted have. risk? And <laughs> yeah. I yeah. heard that word a lot today. Yeah. One question, is the motion subject to a contract agreement? Yes. Yes. Oh, that's your motion. <laughs> okay. Anything else? Roll call, please. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Winkowski? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Motion carried. Um, and uh, that's the end of Bob's report, I believe. And next we move to the Community Development Coordinator, Ann Richards. Um, Spark for life. And. Uh, the next one is the American Cancer Society that I referred to earlier when we were talking about insurance for archery. Yeah, go ahead. Correct. Yep. Included in my report was correspondence from the community manager of the Relay for Life from our area, setting forth a request to utilize Fertile Field for an American Cancer Society event. The event is called the Bark for Life, and the date has been set for Saturday, May 7th, from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Iasco County at a location yet to be determined. At this time, Fertile Field has been identified as a preferred site to hold the event, and the community manager, Trish Jackson, Jackson contacted me in mid-December to see if the township would consider granting permission to utilize the field. As the American Cancer Society does not permit the walking um, for dogs, or of dogs, to occur at the Relay for Life events, this venue is being offered to allow survivors, caregivers, etc., the opportunity to walk with their beloved four-legged friends. The correspondence addressed the commitment from the organization to take care of the cleanup that one might expect from an event like this. Um, there would also be um, possible food vendors and, and so on um, um, on the field during that day. Um, there was a full explanation of the event and the information, as well as a copy of the nonprofit's insurance coverage um, as well. So this evening I'm asking um, for the board's permission um, to grant the American Cancer Society use of First Off Field on that date um, with the understanding that they would name the Charter Township of Oscoda as the additional named insured as our standard bank. So you have a copy of this nonprofit uh, insurance coverage? Mm -hmm. Okay. So we would request that we be asked the additionally named insured like we have for the other mm -hmm. events. And there, um, again, they have the event date set, but they haven't had the location venue yet. This is just we, in case they pick us. This was, well, this is their, where their prefer, preferred location. So okay. if we say yes, then oh, that okay. would be where it's going to be. Is this their first time? Yes. Mm -hmm. So they're just going to. for life? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. It's just going to be on for a field and Around, make a big. like the big oh. circle. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'll make the yep. motion we go ahead, grant the permission. Support. Okay. Um, dumb question. Really dumb. But, uh, okay. If you have a copy of their insurance coverage, um, mm -hmm. and if you've had a chance to look it over, is there any way to tell what it costs them? No. There's no little price tag like Mini Pearl's hat you nope. know, hanging from it? or nope. No price tag. Thanks, Joe. No. Nope. <laughs> so, anyway. 
You're showing your age. Ten nine. <laughs> All right. Uh, go ahead. Roll call, please. Ms. McGuire. Yes. Mr. Gajewski. Yes. Mr. Bengalski. Yes. Mr. Carrasco. Yes. Mr. Wee. Yes. And Mr. Byer. Yes. Motion carried. Thank you. Okay. Next item. Uh, Bennett Lake uh, Manager. Thank you. In the next couple weeks, the process to reestablish the SAD for Bennett and Lake will begin by way of resolution. As you might recall, it was advised that we begin this process after the new year in order to not have an over overlapping of the new and the old SAD. Lake Pro has been the acting lake manager for the last five years. Their five-year contract expired at the end of the 2015 season. The Weed Committee in Vila would like to extend Lake Pro's contract for an additional year. Um, Lake Pro has indicated they are amenable to this and have offered to do so at their current contracted rate of $7,000 a season. As with previous years, the process to issue the RFP for the herbicide application um, is during the month of January. This early date is necessary because the herbicide contractor must be um, lined up and is the one that's required to apply for the DEQ permit. Based on the historically sometimes lengthy turnaround time for the DEQ to issue the permit, this application needs to be made by the end of February at the latest. Uh, this will ensure the issuance of the permit um, will not delay any treatments to the lake um, that might be necessary on the onset of the season. So that's if we actually have an early spring. Anyways, they have to be prepared. But if the board is amenable to approving the to approve extending the contract for Lake Pro um, to provide the management service for the SAD for an additional year. I will also um, seek authorization to have the township's attorney draft the necessary amendment. It should be noted that the township reimbursement of this expense would be contingent upon successful establishment of the SAD, and that the township's attorney, our attorney, has indicated appropriate language can be added to the amendment to address that concern. Okay. Do we have questions regarding this? Both you guys are on uh, Lakeport. We do have, I should have indicated that. We have two people that are on, three actually, that are on. My question is that you had Lake Pro for, a, had a five-year contract, now you're going to a one. Is there something I should read into that? No, it's, yeah, the primary purpose is so that we have somebody that is currently really knowledgeable of the lake. We don't have to look into looking at new management companies that have no knowledge of our lake. Mm -hmm. So it makes it a lot easier for us to go. I understand them. that. But the, but if and it makes sense. Yeah. Why don't you go with another five year contract? Why why drop it Be, to one? Well generally because of the township's uh, policy to go out for competitive bidding. Right. But with a contracted right. service we have the ability to extend, you know, a if year. we choose by a year or so. And that's what we're doing based on the fact that the SAD is in a new, we're in a, it's kind of like a, you know, we yet. don't want to be trying to reestablish the SAD and hiring a new um, right. lake manager that doesn't have and any knowledge. And it also gives us, right. now what we can do is five years and then we can stagger that. Right. So, so now we're off by a year so we don't have to deal with this in the future. That doesn't okay. Makes it's sense. exercising the six year option. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the contract. Right. That's all. Right. Okay. Thank you. All right, any uh, other comments or questions? Do we have a motion? I'll move we go ahead as presented, support. All right, motion by Mr. Minkowski with support from Mr. Gajewski. Roll call, please. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Crasco, yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Mr. Minkowski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay, uh, next item, uh, final item here, uh, is the VA expansion project. Right, and I guess another reason why the um, AP was so large uh, for this meeting. Um, this evening is an invoice dated number 7, um, or I should say dated January 6th, um, number 7, to J.E. Johnson in the amount of $205,423 for work completed or stored to date on the VA expansion project. Um, also wanted to update you in regard to the status. The drywall was complete, um, pretty much finished being hung last week by the end of Friday, and they have temporary heat in so that the drywallers could start taping and mudding uh, this week. Um, so that should be completed by the end of the week is the goal. Uh, 
they're still doing electrical and mechanical and plumbing as you know work um, as it progresses so things have been going along uh, quite well there so again to date we have no change orders that have increased the overall project that's been good yet 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 uh, we're, we're still tweaking some stuff with the flooring so hopefully um, we get that cleared up soon are they ahead of schedule man? Hmm? Are they ahead of schedule or on um, schedule? Well, actually, they're right on schedule, I would say. It, there was a little bit of a delay about two weeks because we had to do that subfloor, you know, when they, to, when they when Beerline did the demolition and the floor was pretty uneven and we had to go in and do that subfloor that had to set before they could get going. And then we had, you know, the, the holiday in there that kind of monkeyed with things a little bit. But they're pretty much, they're pretty much on schedule. So it's, um, I don't know. I've had a few board members stop out to take a look, but if if you get the opportunity, um, let me know and I can you know take you over there. It's really looking good. So. Okay. So I'm looking for approval to make the um, the payment to J.E. Johnson in the amount of two hundred and five thousand four hundred and twenty three dollars. And again, that is being done with an electronic funds transfer. Um, from me. From the treasurer. I'll move as presented. Support. Moved by Ms. McGuire. Support by Mr. Wheat. Anything further? Roll call, please. Mr. Wheat? Yes. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Benkowski? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Okay, tonight we have no uh, ordinances or resolutions, uh, so we'll move to other. And. Uh, the first item under other is a grant agreement uh, regarding habitat improvement. This is the uh, grant agreement relating to the Old Orchard Park uh, boat launch renovation. Uh, this would be the existing launch uh, where the lagoon area is. The project would involve dredging, extending, and improving the launch ramp, and then constructing a seawall. Um, we had applied for this a second time and we're fortunate to be funded our second time around. Uh, the specific amount of funding involved is $32,100 from the state of Michigan and that constitutes an estimated 50% of the overall project cost. So at this point they've asked us to consider approving and executing the agreement and uh, I'm asking for the board's authorization to execute and return it on the township's behalf. Okay, do we have any discussion or questions? Is this the amount that you asked for, 32? You said it's 50% of what it would cost, is that right? It's 50% of our projected budget, yes. Okay. Is, but is this the amount that you applied for in the yes. grant application? Yeah. They didn't downgrade it or anything? They did not. And this is the second time we've applied Yes. First time was the same amount? Uh, first, we increased it incrementally in the second application. Oh. Well, maybe that's what was wrong the first time. You didn't ask for that one? <laughs> okay. <clears throat> well, good. Uh, you worked on this. I'm sure they all Mr. had some part of it. Mr. Absidus. There's a significant amount of credit, yes. Thank you. I'll make, I'll make a motion that we execute the grant, grant agreement. Support. Okay. Moved and supported. Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Bayeski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Reed? Yes. Ms. Grasco, yes. Mr. Bayeski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Motion carried. Uh, number two item under other is swimming beach sampling report. This is uh, for Lake Huron and basically uh, indicates from District Health Department number two um, that the results in 2015 uh, were negative in terms of any bacteria exceedance for E. coli. So it's good news yeah. for Beach Park. Downtown Beach Park, mm -hmm. the one location. Oh, they kind of confine themselves to Lake Huron swimming areas, is that right? Uh, they have a separate component for inland beaches as well. <coughs> is this extra late or am I just imagining? I mean, here we are in January or December. 
and we're getting a ruling on our beaches. I think it's always late, David. Yeah, yeah I came yeah. in in mid-December, so right after our mm -hmm. last meeting. I think we made that statement before. Yeah, yeah. that's normal. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, do we need a motion on that, or just thank you? We do not. But it's nice that ours is the one beach that passes every time. That's right. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. They sample Old Orchard Park as well, the yeah. beach there, and it came back later as well, the whole season. Oh, great. When you say the whole season, it sounds like they did this multiple times. They do it every, I believe, every month. Oh. It's either every two weeks or every month. I think it's every month. Okay. Well, that's good. Good to hear. All right, number three under other Oscoda uh, area first responders, you're in report for 2015. This is informational uh, in keeping with our agreement, um, but I wanted to point out the fact that we had received it and also that the uh, budget for the upcoming year, the projected budget, assumes uh, the, if you will, enhanced contribution from the township. You might recall we talked about some kind of an incentive program and uh, the budget assumes that at least some element of that will be in place. And we have, we have budgeted for 2016 accordingly. Okay. All right. Is there a response, the response time in here? I didn't see it. There is I believe one fairly brief. Call time, is that it? Minutes? On that one page? Third page. Yeah. Third page. Call time, call time that's is their response hours. time? Or the amount of time they spent on that? Call? Yeah, that's oh. their hours. Yeah. yeah, I don't see a response time anywhere. No. Hmm. I'll ask that question. Long time for it, yeah. We don't want 62 minutes to be the response. No, I would, would not. <laughs> That's something I saw where they had in. So you're going to ask them for that for the next time or for I go think back? That's what this is right here. That might be it on the next yeah. page the next where it says, yeah, where it's they're talking yeah. about oh, yeah, the responders and then the ambulance. I think yeah. that's your times there, yeah. Aaron. That's what the, when you go it on the bus, it says response time and then parentheses minutes. Yeah. And it okay. Yeah. Yeah. So they responded in zero minutes to call number one? They must not have had anybody respond, would be my guess. It says four So are the four members then just East River Road? Maybe they were right there. So it's right outside the front door? <laughs> Was oh. it a Thursday? We could have been <laughs> training. Yeah. It'd be off a little. Because <laughs> it says four members. Right. I mean, these other times look really good. These eight minutes, four minutes. Mm -hmm. oh, well, they may not right start there. it until they get That's there. right up here. Yeah. Harmony is in a saddle right off a of river road. So maybe they're thinking that it, they were right there. Possibly. I'll get clarification. Even if, it was on, even if it was out on the road, it's going to take them a minute to get from the building to the road. I mean. Mm -hmm. Okay. I often wonder how they, uh, you know, I mean, the crisis situation, everybody's in a hurry. Who's a timekeeper? Yeah. <laughs> Who sits around there with a stopwatch and figures this out? <clears throat> anyway. Um, Item number four, the Chamber of Commerce, who is represented here tonight, uh, has a uh, use request for the, uh, regarding the Snowbox uh, Derby. Yes, and our uh, standard approach in the past has been to send a letter, assuming the board's amenable to honoring the request, uh, indicating, uh, and they've touched on it in their letter, that insurance would be required uh, and also that the township will uh, participate in providing assistance to the extent requested if we practically can. 
And if history is a guide, that would be the majority, if not all, the assistance that we've rendered in the past. Okay. I'll make a motion. We grant the property use request. Support. Okay, the motion by McGuire. Support by Mr. Gajewski. Uh, any comment from the Chamber of Commerce on any changes from the usual? Uh, no changes. That's Lappin in Alpena, right? They provide insurance like this, like we talked about tonight. Um, they're who we go through. We actually, um, our carrier is under a different name. It's just like if you went to Miles Insurance, but auto owners is who the policy is for, um, for our events. It's, a, it's Michigan. We just changed it because of the events um, and liabilities. And things. We went to a different insurance carrier that was better to serve our events and needs. But again, I don't have a price tag for you. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'm sorry. No, I can't. Am I that easy of a read? <laughs> uh, that was the next thing. People could kill themselves on snowballs. <laughs> yeah. So. Okay. <clears throat> Any further questions? Okay, roll call, please. Mr. Benkowski? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. Crasco? Yes. Mr. Byron? Yes. Motion carried. Okay, uh, item five deals with the lot split issue. Yes. Um, Mr. Michael Fullerton has uh, asked for potential approval of a land division that would involve uh, splitting 60 acres uh, off his existing larger parcel uh, in keeping with the drawings that are in the packet. Uh, the land division application has been reviewed by staff uh, and has gotten all the hurdle over all the hurdles, if you will, and uh, it's being recommended for approval at this point. Okay. Questions regarding the land split item? I'll move we go ahead. Okay. Support. Motion by Mr. Bankowski. Roll call, please. Ms. Carrasco, yes. Mr. Bankowski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Mr. Bayeski? Yes. Mr. Byer? Yes. Okay. Item number six under other, um, and this would be the archery proposal that we talked about earlier at the beginning of this meeting. Um, are there any further questions that anybody has regarding this before I ask for a motion? I'd like to say that uh, I think Mr. I think Mr. Krowski's got. A great idea here for an archery league um, and the proposal that he put together I thought was done pretty well um, but I do still have concerns with the liability insurance okay my turn well go ahead, <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Um, I'm happy to see something like this trying to get into the community center that's what a community center is for is different things like that um, I understand the insurance issue um, I also understand that our our own carrier even said if they don't have it that we can use the waivers yes there's still a risk um, but I think I'm with Paul on the fact that it's a community center and we have other things that we don't require like the men's basketball league racquetball weightlifting that type of thing if I think that we could move forward um, with a waiver and work with Al and Paul can work together to make it as secure as possible limit to no spectators maybe at first it's only 10 weeks so you know give it a try and see I mean you know if it gets to the point where well, they missed and something happened then okay learn a lesson you know I mean they're experienced shooters it's not like I was concerned about it being beginners but it's not 
Um, I think that we need to grow our community center. It has a hard time staying open. We, it doesn't even fund itself now. So I'm, I'm happy that they came to us to try to use our facility. I agree with you on that, Jamie. Any help the community center can get, it needs. Uh, this would be well-needed funding for it. Um, I also agree the men's basketball pickup league is a hundred times more dangerous than, I mean, unless they're going to shoot the bow and arrows at each other, then they could probably <laughs> even it out. But uh, I think the way Mr. Rakowski is going about it is the right way, and I think it's something we should allow. Paul, I shot in indoor leagues. I shot from Adrian to here. And uh, great idea. I asked you about a lot of the equipment. That's my main concern. The rest of the board asked you about a lot of other things. But uh, I think it's a great idea. But don't bring a crossbow in there. And if you don't bring a team. There you go. Your turn. No, everybody said what I wanted to say. I think it's a good idea. And I'm glad to see something going in the community center that, because I've always been a pusher. We need to get more in there. Um, and this is a good start. Okay. Sorry. I'll make a motion we allow it with waivers. Support. Okay. Uh, motion made by Mr. Minkowski with support from Mr. Lee that we go ahead with waivers. And work on the storage stuff and the security? Oh, I think that's something that Paul and Al will have to work out between them. Right. Yeah, Al is the guy that's going to do the scheduling here. Yep. He's the man. That's what we hire him to do. Uh, okay, I would like to just say, uh, I would like to mirror what my colleagues have said. It's a good idea. I'm not afraid of new things. And uh, it's a good idea. We generate some income for us. Uh, definitely use of the facility. But I am concerned about the insurance thing. And I am a little dismayed that, because this was talked about um, mid-December. Would that be fair? The two of you. And you indicated that you were concerned about insurance at the time. I'm a little unhappy, Paul, that you didn't avail yourself of the time to check it out instead of just saying it's going to be way too high, I know. Uh, well, and, and can, I, can I add something there, Jim, in yes. fairness? Yeah, um, I had sent Paul an email, I thought, but it didn't get to him in mid-December. Okay. So just recently he got those questions. Okay, so he didn't have yeah, to be after December, about. 11 days of January. Okay. All right. Um, Did somebody second your motion? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay. yes. Um, I, I I guess my my wish would be to postpone this until the next meeting to see what he comes up with as insurance. But I don't think you want that. I think you want to vote now. You want to decide tonight. And if that's true, uh, I'm a no vote. So. Uh, well, Paul, can we ask you, even if we do approve it, if you could at least call and see how much it would have been? I will do that. Uh, I, I did some checking while I was sitting here and saw some of the prices. They only have a third archery for other sporting activities. And in some cases, it's like $200 a night uh, tournaments. That's the only thing I can kind of mm -hmm. relate it to. But oh, I, I would be all for getting the insurance if it was by. Um, but I would like to have the approval to go forward so I can order the equipment, get them here and start the league, and if we can afford insurance, um, then we'll, we'll bring that in. And not only for protection of the general taxpayer, what about protection for you if something happens and somebody says, you organized this, I'm suing you? Yeah, I, I get that. But the, again, based on my experience, I think the risk is so minuscule if it were something else uh, that I would be worried about, that somebody would get injured from, uh, yeah, I would think twice about it. But in this circumstance, uh, I think the risk is pretty, pretty minimal. But I hear what you're saying. And I will look into that. And are you willing to state an age limit, uh, 18? Um, I am not uh, agreeable to that at this point. I That's think what, what our what our uh, 
remember who you is a good uh, If there's somebody that, I mean, there's probably kids out there that can shoot better than me, you know, that are that we would make sure that we limit it to people that are capable, mm -hmm. not just guys that are going out there and uh, just learning how to do it, because it, it, would, it yeah. wouldn't allow that. I'm just envisioning a 12-year-old with a compound bow and it hits the wall and bounces back and yeah no I certainly would say it's not going to be anybody under 14 uh, you know I but I can visualize 14 year old kids that can, and I know some that can shoot pretty darn good okay. with the, especially with the equipment they make today but I think the key is like I said as long as you follow the etiquette rules and you don't even touch a bow until everybody's behind the line and declared so then uh, Okay. Roll call, please. Mr. Gajewski? Yes. Ms. McGuire? Yes. Mr. Weed? Yes. Ms. Crasco? Yes. Mr. Minkowski? Yes. Mr. Byer? No. Good luck with this. Thank you. I'd like to point out one thing. This is the second time that I have seen Mr. Murkowski bring out some fantastic examples of why the township has to have very clear, concise policies on things that should be done so that it's very easy for people to follow them and it's fair across the board for everybody. Yes, you have certainly brought that up before, and rightly so. It's just hard when you when you're doing those things to try to figure out everything that's going to encompass in that. So it's a work in progress, I think, every time we do it and redo it and redo it. We learn to add something to it. So that's just Okay. Motion is carried. Um, we're down to public comment. Anybody? Uh, sure. Robert Tazier, Hillcrest Drive. Um, I have a <clears throat> just a little question that um, I was wondering if Oscoda Township has a neighborhood watch program. If the police department has something they to used help to have neighborhoods. One, they used to have one on the villages of Oscoda, but I don't know if they do anymore. A lot of townships and places um, get grant money for that for help the police department. Um, and having a good, reliable neighborhood watch program is beneficial to the community as far as keeping down crime, especially in seasonal areas. And I was just wondering if there was anything. No, we, this involves people on a schedule riding around neighborhoods? Not necessarily. A lot of them involve um, signage and uh, go to people in neighborhoods that just keep an eye that may notice vehicles going by there's break-ins going on a police officer knows well if so-and-so is up there in the neighborhood watch we can go ask them if they have noticed any unusual vehicles um, some some even put up um, like game cams and secluded areas or turnarounds things of that nature where it'll actually take a picture of the vehicles mm -hmm. yeah. And stuff, you know. Is there some training involved in this? Um, I think it's more just working with the department. Exactly. Yeah. I, I know that there's different programs out there. I'm not familiar with them. I know that they exist. I know that um, there's probably some fundage that may come from other areas. Mm -hmm. um, I know that in some communities they'll have a officer assigned to neighborhood watch that that's the go-to person um, and I was just wondering if we had anything like that set up here well, we don't but that's not to say and I'm not trying to dump on you here but I mean would you be willing to meet with the police chief and Bob Stalker and wouldn't this talk this up couldn't this be carried in with the department study and would that be brought up at that time and it, it could yes then it can be implemented all mm -hmm with all the changes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there may be grant money out there mm -hmm. that is going to pay for an officer for all we know. Yeah. I mean. Right. I wrote it down. 
That was it. All right. Thank we'll you. we'll uh, look at that. Bernie? Yeah. Quick question. Bernie Shank, Nebraska Street. Haven't moved yet. <laughs> Uh, quick question, uh, is there any progress report as to negotiations with the parking lot at this property? Uh, under board comment, the next item here, I, I have a, a brief comment about that. Yes. Oh, okay, very good. Okay. And I also wanted to uh, tell you that it was uh, a good response that the uh, County Road Commission put up a, a speed control sign on f41 for a week mm -hmm. which i think helped but then at the end of the week they took it back so i did notice in driving around i'm trying to remember where it was in west branch i believe or somewhere in this area i saw they have permanent installations of smaller ones mm -hmm. that are uh, you know self self electrical you know what are you trying to solar, no, no. solar cells yeah solar cell on them and they tell what your speed is and uh, it would be interesting, I think, to look into what the cost of these are and permanently mount one on F41 and that's probably in that same location, but it ought to be in both directions, <laughs> coming and going. I'm gonna call the road commission gentleman and just see, you know, why they didn't leave it there a little longer, or why they didn't move it around within our community, and uh, it would have been neat to just see it move to the other side for a while. Sure. Yeah. yeah. But it's it's quite a big, uh, you know, big trailer and everything else. But I saw these are permanently mounted on a post, yeah. and they're a lot size, smaller. Right? They're only yeah. about this size, mm -hmm. and uh, solar cell on them powers them, and it just tells what your speed is, and uh, lets you know if you're over the limit or not. And you could have those. I don't know what the cost of those are, but they're permanent. You don't have to uh, service them or whatever. Anyways, thanks for the comment. Thanks, Bruce. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay, uh, board comment. Me, I just want to remind everybody that there's an election on March the 8th. It's the presidential primary. Um, the ballots are not in yet, but the uh, applications for absentee voting is in. If you want one, just contact us and we'll be glad to send you one. And as soon as the ballots get in, then we mail them out to you. You must designate, though, whether you want a Republican ballot, a Democratic ballot, or just a proposal ballot. So there's a choice on there. And if you don't check one of those, we can't send you a ballot unless you do check it because the state requires you can only have one of those ballots. So don't yell at us if we didn't make the rules. <laughs> so. But uh, yeah, if you want your um, absentee ballot, just fill out the application and we'll send them to you as soon as they come in. That's okay. it. Okay. Anyone else? Well, in connection with Bernie's question and so forth, um, I just would like to update the board a little bit uh, as far as what's going on there. And uh, unfortunately, I'm, it's, I'm sad to say we haven't made a great deal of headway um, or none. But uh, I, uh, uh, Trustee Gajewski and myself have made some efforts, particularly uh, um, Martin has uh, been in contact with the uh, parking lot owner uh, more than I have because I've been out of town with uh, some family health issues. Uh, so he's been uh, on a somewhat regular basis. And then when I got back, uh, we did put together a meeting with the owner of the parking lot and uh, went to a local restaurant, sat there for quite a while, discussed things. I must confess that I was a, a bit surprised. I thought we were talking about the parking lot and uh, what could we do. And um, the parking lot owner has a problem <laughs> with Mr. Stalker. Uh, I don't know how that developed, but uh, I, I don't see the reason for it, but it's there. And uh, so Martin and I, and correct me if I'm wrong, we just said, if you have a problem with the parking lot and, and, and a particular member of, of, uh, of the township uh, administration is a problem for you, 
just talk to us. You know, talk to Martin or myself, and and uh, you don't have to deal with the person that you perceive to be very evil. <laughs> You're not laughing. <laughs> so anyway, uh, but that didn't make any sense at all, I guess, to them. And uh, it, it looked like it was set in stone. Uh, the newspaper a week or two ago had a, an article on the front page. I have it here. Gilbert's will not give Osco a new lease for State Street parking. And there's just a bunch of items in there. There are 20-some quotes from the owners of the parking lot and one or two from Bob Stalker and zero from me. Uh, uh, as township supervisor, I was not contacted at all about this issue, not a bit. And I understand the editor of the paper has told the reporter that Mr. Stalker is the spokesman. You don't have to bother with anyone else. So, but uh, there's just a lot of things. I don't want to go through them all. There's just a, a lot of uh, items. I've already indicated the contacts we had primarily with Martin and then myself uh, also. Uh, and one of the items in here is that uh, not one word, was, was, no response from the township at all. We just completely ignored their concerns. And that's simply not true. And uh, many other items in there that uh, just are really off the mark. But I'm sure the public uh, reads this and figures that the press is right on the money. and. Uh, <laughs> We had virtually no input at all in, in that something. Um, so anyway, um, but no, we haven't come up with anything. Uh, in fact, the whole conversation kind of switched to uh, not the parking lot, but um, wanting to get this building uh, purchased or demolished or something like that. And uh, I was quite amazed at that turn but uh, so there's a lot more to the story and uh, we haven't solved anything so we're just going to move along there was one thing in the art in the newspaper article is that uh, the parking lot owner made an offer to buy this and that is true but the amount offered was pretty low Pretty low. Was it a formal offer? It was a uh, sitting in a restaurant, having a glass of water or whatever in front of you. It was not a formal offer, but it was pretty serious offer, and uh, pretty low. He was asked to bring a formal offer, but nothing's here yet. No. So do you think that has anything to do with the fact that you? It started out with bad deal of the parking lot, but you know, I, I said I wasn't going to get into detail. But but our our DPW guys are good people, <laughs> and they maintain the parking lot in the early morning before cars start getting in the way. There. And the people making the charges that they were never seen doing that, they're not going to be there at seven in the morning when when our guys are doing their work. Same thing with snowplow. You know, you got to get to that parking lot to clean it up before there are cars all over the place. And that's why we did that. Uh, I, I think that the biggest thing that, that upsets me and, and others uh, is that it, it sounds like we made a deal, an eight-year deal, and didn't keep our, you know, we, we were slugs and, and didn't keep our word on it. And our DPW guys worked their butts off. Uh, keeping that snow plowed, it's one of the first things they do in the morning on snowy days. We did go, our guys went above and beyond we, what was required of them. Yeah. And, and according to the newspaper article, not that the newspaper, are, the, the newspaper article in fairness just said what they were told by the owners and uh, printed as quotations. But we, uh, my wife was uh, part owner of the beauty salon. It used to be next door, and her her employees would uh, wave uh, at the DPW guys cleaning up the lot, like every time they came in, because they would come in early, you know, seven thirty or eight o'clock, and there they were. You know. But 
So it's a kind of a mess. I don't know the solution. But that's my my report. <laughs> Pretty bad. So <clears throat> anyway, anyone else? Um, then I need a motion to adjourn. So moved. Okay. We are adjourned.